Hello, I'm Atuba Judd. Welcome to a new month. Now, this is the month of April. Now, God has been brooding over my mind, my heart, my spirit concerning the month of April. Listen, it's a special month. That's why if you haven't joined the, the, the prayer meeting going on, join. Wait for the next watch and join us praise god you know the the zoom link is on the screen just join us so we're praying at every watch and we're fasting for 24 hours now don't say oh i didn't know i didn't start fasting you can join right now praise god just join us start your fast from now praise god and and listen god is going to be doing amazing things in the month of april listen april to may there are months of great turnaround. Turnaround to you as an individual. Turnaround for our nation. I'm telling you something. God is set for our nation. And that's why the word of the Lord to, that he has given to me concerning this month of April is in Psalm 102. Turn your Bibles there with me. And let me show you something. Praise God. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Now, where you see Zion, you can put your household. Praise God. You can put your name. And you can put your nation there. Praise God. I'm telling you, literally, literally, God is doing something in our nation. Say, so, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Do you know there is a set time? Yeah, there is. You know, people don't know this. See, let me tell you this. God blesses us every day. You know, the Bible says he daily loads us with benefit. And that is true. See, and as a believer, you must learn to take advantage of the benefit of God every day of your life. He daily loads us with benefit. That's why Sam, David said in the book of Psalms, say, look, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits praise god yeah he's got benefit that he gives to us and he says when you bless the lord don't forget that you've got benefits to receive from him and that benefit is given to us daily glory to god now he says the set time has come see so i'll say there is the daily benefit that god gives you and then there is also the set time blessing. Now, what, do, what, do, what does the scripture mean by the set time? The set time, see, every one of us have our season. Everyone has a specific thing that God has assigned to bring forth your glory. That's why he told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, There are things that have been hidden, wisdom that have been hidden, but they were ordained for our glory. I mean, he wisdom that even the princes of this world don't know about. So that thing that God has reserved for your glory, thank you, Holy Spirit, that thing that will bring forth your manifestation, that idea, that wisdom, that connection, that person you're going to meet, that thing that you're going to set out to do, that new business you're going to start, that new, new, new venture you're going into, the set time for that has come, praise God. Yeah! Oh, hallelujah. I'll read this again. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Do you know it's your set time? I'm telling you, listen, Nigeria, I'm speaking to you right now by the Holy Ghost. Your set time is here. So rejoice. I have, I, you know, anytime I pray for our nation, I keep seeing the great plans that God has for her. 
Yeah. And that's why I don't join people to condemn the nation. I don't join people to condemn the leaders. God knows everything he's doing. Let me tell you the truth. There is no one that has become a leader in our nation. There is no one that has sat on that seat of authority in our nation that God didn't ordain for them to be. Now, I know you want to say, are you saying, are you trying to say, yes, I'm telling you the truth. Praise God. You see, you, you don't understand God. That's the problem. You don't understand his ways. You don't know his program. All you can think about is your selfish ideas and your selfish thoughts. That's all you can think about. All you can think about is, oh, I want, I want someone that will favor me. You know, yes, of course, leaders should be concerned about the security, the well-being of her citizens. Oh, sure. But you see, when God is choosing leaders, there are specific assignments he gives to them to accomplish. And you see, as they all accomplish their assignment, eventually his ultimate goal, his ultimate plan is going to be fulfilled. I told you, we are in the season of fulfillment of prophecies. So even the prophecy God has spoken concerning our nation, we have reached the season where the fulfillment will begin. So also the prophecy that God has spoken concerning you. We are in the season where it is being fulfilled. Now imagine, imagine if, if, if Pharaoh was your brother or your, no, no, let me not say your brother. Imagine if Pharaoh was your friend. The Pharaoh that ruled the season the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Imagine if that Pharaoh was your friend. And you are watching all this drama taking place between Moses and all the miracles. Whose side would you have been on? You see, Moses just comes up and says, Thus saith the Lord. And you guys have never known that God. You see, so God had to ordain a Pharaoh to be on that seat, that kind of Pharaoh. According to the scriptures, God said, I, I, for this purpose, I have raised you up so that I will show in you my power and my mighty deeds. So when Pharaoh was born, God was saying, that's the young man I want to be, the Pharaoh of Egypt in so-so years' time. Now, some other people were like, how can God choose a man like that? But he did. He did. Praise <laughs> God. And, and Pharaoh fulfilled his purpose. See, imagine if Pharaoh had chickened out from the first time when Moses turned serpent to rod, and, uh, rod to serpent, sorry. And then Pharaoh just said, ah, I've never seen this kind of thing before. Please, Moses... Send, simply send your people. Just, you guys, just go. Just go away. How would the gods of Egypt have been judged? See? Because all those signs God did in Egypt, he was judging their gods. So the more Pharaoh's heart got hardened, the more God brings judgment upon the gods of Egypt until he was done with every one of them. So when God set them free, they were free indeed. Now, it's the same thing God is doing in this season. He is bringing you liberty. Remember, the scripture says, whoever the Son of Man sets free is what? Free indeed. See, because God is not just saying, come out. He's not rescuing you like, hey, hey, shh, I'm here to save you. Come out, come out. No, 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 that's not God for you. What God does when he brought salvation to us, he dealt with the one who holds us captive, who held us captive, I mean. He dealt with him finished him up and then he said now we are free to go praise god meaning from henceforth no one has the authority to hold you bound anymore no nothing nobody no demon no addiction nothing has the authority to hold you bound i wish you would understand that the day jesus saved you he saved you from sin he saved you from poverty he saved you from addiction. He saved you from any kind of bondage. So when you find someone say, I'm born again. I, I, I believe in Jesus. But I don't know. I have this addiction I've been struggling with. Hey, you don't need any special prayers. You just need to stand up and walk in your freedom. I'm telling you, it's as simple as that. So how do I do? Just get up and say, you know what? I'm not doing this again. You know, he says, just that. Yes! Because... That thing behind that addiction that is holding you bound has been judged already in Christ Jesus. It was judged. 
It has no right to hold you bound. But, but, but why do I keep doing it? Because you have been deceived to feel it takes a while. You know, they tell you all manner of things. You can't just stop addiction like that. It takes a while. You have to withdraw gently. You have to withdraw, you know, slowly. And, you know, come on now. If Jesus has made you free, brothers and sisters, you are free indeed. So the day you tell yourself, no more. And that's it. No more. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. So you, you need to recognize this so that you begin to walk in your favor season. The time for God to favor you has come. And you don't want to put your hand to spoil that favor that God is bringing upon your life. As for God, he will be true to his word. He will show up with favor plans for you. He will show up with goodness for you. He will show up with all the things to make your life better. But the question is, will you believe him and walk with him to walk right into your favor? Or would you see your favor and remember iniquity and tell yourself, see, I don't want to start something that I will not finish. Come on now. Come on now. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The month of April, Ah, la bouche le ikusa ikabaha. Ah, le broche ne venga naka la quadisa parite hete. I see things happening in your life to set you at liberty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everything that looks like a bondage, everything that I've been holding you bound. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know what the Lord is telling me? He's telling me to tell you it's not going to be broken. What he is doing is that he is opening your eyes that you will see how free he has made you. So get up! <laughs> get up! You've been made free. Get up! You say, in our family, you know, the moment you get to this level, things will just start scattering. No more. I'm telling you, I hear the Lord say, no more. Don't believe that lie from the pit of hell. Get up. Begin to do the things that the Lord has placed in your heart. Rise up and begin to fulfill God's dream. Rise up because you were born to fulfill prophecy. Rise up because the word of the Lord is coming to you even now. And he is telling you exactly what you should do. As you obey his voice. Not hardening your heart. Remember what he told us in Hebrews. He says today, if you will hear his voice... Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart like those folks in the wilderness. See, God struggled with them for 40 years to make them believe in his ability to take care of them. That's all God wanted them to know. But they couldn't accept it. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't tell themselves the truth that, hey, God will actually take care of us. They couldn't. They were eating manna every day, yet they were waiting for the day they would start going to their farms. Because this manner, how do you trust it? I mean, something has been consistent for 20 years, 30 years, 35 years, 39 years, and you still don't trust it. Something was wrong with those guys. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray the Spirit of God will open your eyes to see all the places he has set a liberty for. He, all the places he has, he has brought liberty into your life. I pray this month, your eyes will be opened. Your eyes will be opened. Because I hear the Lord telling me now that, look, don't say I will do something for them. No, 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 I've already done everything I need to do for them. Rather tell them that their eyes will be opened to see what I have done for them. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord is just telling me. And he's done everything. You are sick in your body. He's healed you already. So what do you do now? That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Right now, right now, the Lord is bringing things your way to make you see that you have been made free. You have been healed. He has prospered you. Oh, glory to your holy name. Father, I just bless you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is happening this month. It's a month of discovery. 
What are we discovering? We're discovering that our set time is here. Hallelujah. So we'll run the race with ease and we'll see your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Be blessed. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. And a reminder, join the prayer meeting today. God bless you. Bye-bye.